Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, guys, wherever you are on this beautiful world. Whenever you're watching this video, welcome to the Bitcoin family channel. For the newcomers, my name is Didi. Today, again, four amazing Bitcoin charts, a beautiful trading tip. Yes, of course, some live advice, a travel tip, and talking about the news because I read a really interesting article. Again, a cool video walking on the beach here in Phuket in Thailand, walking the other side today. Yes, let's do something different. Let's jump into the charts first to show you exactly what is happening. Are we gonna go to 48K or are we gonna go and pull back from this 44K level down below 40K again? Let's quickly take a look at the charts. Bam. The first chart, guys, is this beautiful daily chart. On the daily chart, we can see <clears throat> that we are indeed running against that resistance up there, 44K. I drew that green line already weeks ago. Check my videos from weeks ago. I told you guys, when we were here at 30K, our target will be 44K, and we reached that target now. So now the question is, are we gonna break this huge area of resistance? Because 44K is a huge area of resistance. And if we are gonna break it, where are we gonna go? So for me, if we break it, we go to 48K. But we need to really understand that it's also possible we won't break it and we will pull back a little bit, for example, to that green line over there around 40K levels. The RSI, we can see we're losing strength. We are going to turn a little bit, so we need to pick it up again, the volume and everything. And the MACD, still very bullish, guys. We can see the MACD very bullish. But we need to zoom out to see on the weekly what is happening as well. The weekly, we see also that white line. Again, that's the resistance lines. Look to the left. How many green circles touch that line? That's why this line is so important to break. But it doesn't mean we are going to break it now directly, and that's why I have some other charts that will show you this as well. Here also, uh, on the weekly, we can see the RSI just popping above uh, that beautiful 70 level. We can see the MACD still very bullish, nothing wrong. We had that beautiful bottom. Here, we have a beautiful structure, a bottom, a high, a higher low, a higher high, a higher low, an even a higher high. Where is going to be that higher low? It's going to be somewhere around that line over there, that orange line, 35k. I believe that if we will pull back, we could even pull back to that 40, uh, to the 35k, and then take off to 48k, guys. That's a certainly a possibility if you're asking me. Now, if you look at this chart, the Gaussian channel, we've been talking um, for many years already about this chart. We can see something very interesting as well. On the Gaussian channel, we see that we are mimicking the move that we saw uh, as well in somewhere May there, 2019. In that month, we can see that we went up and broke here in uh, 6 May, I think it was, here that Gaussian channel. And from the moment that we broke that top red line of the Gaussian channel, we took it up all the way here, bam, bam 100, almost 120%. Huge run. Did that mean that the bull market started? No, we got a pullback. Pullback was also a massive pullback because we took it all the way up from the top here to the wick bottom, that's like 70% pullback. That was the COVID crash, so I believe it should have only pulled back somewhere to the midline of that uh, Gaussian channel, 44%, but that was that retrace. After this retrace, the real bull market started. That was also after the halving in 2020. The question now is, to which area in this bull market do we compare it? Do we compare it to the moment that we pulled out of that uh, red uh, line? So that's here. From there, we broke the red line. Uh, we went up only 20% and we pulled back that 20% and exactly to that midline. And is this now the official bull market? Or do we compare this breakout over here from the green line now to the 2019 breakout moment? That's the question. Aside of those questions, we also can see in the charts that pullbacks are very natural in these bull markets. Let's go back a little bit further over here. Here we broke out, this is the 2016 bull market. Look, we broke out out of that red line all the way up here, 60% up. And what did we do? We did pull back to the towards that Gaussian channel again. Here with a dip of 30%, we went up again. Again with a dip of 30%, we went up again. Again with a dip, we went up again. Again with a dip. Most of these dips were 30%. So no matter which bull market we are mimicking or copying, there will be moments we will be pulling back to that Gaussian channel line. And that is why I think it's very important for you guys to keep an eye on the five-day chart and the Gaussian channel. Because also here, when we broke out a second time, we pulled back to the Gaussian channel. 
and the Gaussian channel at the top now is at 30k. So yes, we could even pull back to 30k. I don't believe this. I see 35k as a very uh, good big area of support, but it could be happening. Now, let's jump into some more interesting charts. I don't want to freak you out guys, I'm still very bullish, but I'm just analyzing the charts, what happened before when we took these huge distances from, for example, the Gaussian channel. Now, let's jump into these charts. This is the first one. This one is showing you the CME gaps that we have at the moment. And the CME gaps, to be clear, around 90% of the CME gaps is mostly being filled. And at this chart, we can see two CME gaps, one over here, it's 20k levels here, same 20k levels, and we can see one over here. That's a 40k level. Uh, we even can see one over here, but that was filled afterwards. You can see that. And um, this one, 40k, yes, I believe we can fill that gap. I truly believe we could pull back to 40k levels. Nothing strange in that. This one over here, 20k gap. I don't believe we will fill this one during this bull market. Maybe in the next bear market, but I don't see us dropping now from 44k with 50 with more than 50% to 20k levels. I just don't see this happening. There's too much bullishness into the market at the moment. So this one not going to be filled. This one I believe that will be filmed in the, uh, filled in the short term, guys. Now next chart. This chart also very interesting chart found on Twitter. TA Trader Allen. He's comparing two beautiful fractals with each other. Now, we have over here 2015 all the way to 2017 bull market. In this area, we can see two tops over here. Then we can see a crossover, bearish. The red line is crossing the blue line. This is a 50 simple moving average crossing the 250 simple moving average. We create a bottom area. And then again, that red line, the 50 is crossing the 250 to the top side. Now, the moment that that red line crossed that blue line again to the top, we saw a massive run in Bitcoin. And that massive run, don't be fooled, it looks very short period, but it was two years, 2016 all the way up to 2017, December. So that, let's say 2018, January. So two years. Now we see the same. Double top, bearish crossover, 50 down below the 250, bear market bottom, 50 now crossing that 250 to the top. Will we again see this insane bull market? The price started to react already. Same night it started to react over there. Is this going to continue all the way up to 400k, 300k? I don't believe so. I believe 120k levels to 140k levels, definitely a possibility. And I also believe it can take again two years, all the way into 2025. So beautiful chart that shows you Yes, it can take all the way to 2025 to reach a new all-time top. And yes, uh, this bullish crossover is an indication that the bull market really is started. You should be accumulating Bitcoin, guys. Now, then we have this chart. This chart is the Bitcoin monthly chart, uh, the building momentum. It's just showing you what is happening with the RSI and the MACD. Um, beautifully showing you that the MACD at the moment, yes, over here we can see crossing upwards, the blue line above the black line. We can see positive bars on the MACD. Uh, we can see the RSI increasing towards that we enter the halving. This is the D-Day for the ETF approval. I think it's January. Now, every time it happens the same. Towards that halving, that RSI is crawling up to the dotted line. Here again, towards that halving, crawling up to the dotted line. Then we break that dollar line, that's bull market, second part, huge run. Then we break that dollar line, bull market, second part, huge run. If we break this line, bull market, second part, huge run. And I believe that will happen around the halving again. And I think there will be a massive bull market that could take us even above 100k, guys. Beautiful job. The last chart for today is this one. Um, also, again, a confirmation of what we see in the charts. Very uh, beautiful chart. This chart um, is showing you the short-term hodler and the long-term hodler on-chain cost basis. We can see the orange line is the Bitcoin realized price. And uh, the bluish line is the long-term hodler realized price. Now, when the orange line crossed above the blue line, we saw a 12,700% run in 2012 to 2014. When the orange line crossed the blue line in 2016, halving, we saw 4,474% run. When the blue line crossed that orange line in the halving 2020 period, 
we saw a run of 819% to the top. Now again, the line is crossing. Will that lead to a 400% run or 300% run? If it is a 300% run, we will end around 120K. 400% run, we will end around 160K. But we can see that the line starts to cross again. And that's a very positive indication if you compare it to the previous times that that line crossed over there. All huge runs. That were the charts for today, guys. You should be buying Bitcoin. I hope you really enjoyed the charts, guys. Yes, very simple. Let's keep it stupid simple. Just buy Bitcoin. That's the only thing that all the charts that everyone can show you at the moment is keep buying Bitcoin. If you're not buying Bitcoin now, buy Bitcoin at the next dip. If you're not buying Bitcoin at the next dip, buy Bitcoin at that next dip. All the way up to the halving in 2024, you should be accumulating Bitcoin. It's simple as that. It's not difficult science. It's not difficult mathematics. We are nearing the halving in April 2024. And from that halving, if you look historically, we have been going up. Always going up, guys. Yeah, so we went up in 2016 after the halving, in 2020 after the halving, and we will go up after the halving in 2024. Four years later again, doing exactly the same move, up, up, up. Now, let's jump into the trading tip. For the trading tip today, we are talking again of candlestick patterns. The whole week, candlestick patterns. Today, we will talk about the Dragonfly Doji and the Gravestone Doji, guys. The Dragonfly Doji can either happen at the top or at the bottom. And this Doji is telling us that there will be a reversal into the market. The Dragonfly Doji looks like a T. It's like a very long wick, and then the opening and the closing time is almost all the same. So we have a a, a T forming on the charts. That is when we see a Dragonfly Doji. So when you see a bearish move all the way down and we see a long wick and a very tiny body without a wick up on the top, that's a T. Then we will see a new reversal all the way to the top. If we see it the other way, like on the top, we see a long wick down and we see a small body, that will be a reversal to the bottom, guys. So a Dragonfly Doji is a very important candlestick to know. And the opposite of a Dragonfly Doji is a Gravestone do Doji, and that's a bearish reversal candle, guys. That's the opposite of a T. So you have a small little body on the bottom, no wick to the downside, and a large wick to the upside. That's a Gravestone Doji, and that means if you see that on the top of a beautiful run, we are going to go bam, downwards again. So two beautiful candlestick patterns, the Dragonfly Doji and the Gravestone Doji. That was the trading tip for the day. Go and search the charts if you can find one of these Dojis. And let me know down below if you saw that the trend did indeed reverse. Let's jump into the travel tip. The travel tip is a very important one this time. We even made the mistake like a week ago almost, and a video will be out about that. But that's a family video. If you fly to certain countries, you need to have an onward ticket to enter that country. For example, Thailand or Indonesia, both of them now and then apply that rule. So if you fly from the Netherlands or Portugal or Spain to Thailand, you should have an onward ticket or like a ticket back to your home country or a ticket to another country. Because when you arrive at the customs, they will check your passport and they will ask you, hey, do you have an onward ticket? I can't see any tickets on your name in the system. And if you don't have that ticket, you might be sent back to the country you came from. I'm going to tell you a story in a bit. If you don't want to have a ticket back, just you only want to buy a single ticket, for example, to Thailand, then the solution for that would be Cheap Onward Ticket. It's a website, cheaponwardticket.com, and you can tell the website, okay, I'm in Thailand, I can only stay 60 days, for example, so I need a flight out of Thailand within those 60 days, it doesn't matter to which country, uh, just book me something. And then it will book you an onward ticket to other country or back to your home country for 12 euros. And the moment you um, enter Thailand so that the customs saw, ah, he has an onward ticket, then two days later that ticket will be deleted out of the system and you don't have the ticket anymore, so you don't even need to fly, but it doesn't cost you more than that $12. So these tickets are called cheap onward tickets. So that prevents you of being stopped at the customs. Now, I have a funny story to tell you about the family, because last year when we flew to Thailand, we didn't need an onward ticket. We didn't buy a ticket back home as well, nothing. We just had a single ticket into Thailand. No questions asked. This year, same thing, no questions asked. So we've just flew into Thailand, we didn't have another ticket, no problem at all. Now, last week, Romain and the kids needed to fly to Kuala Lumpur 
to extend their visa. I by now have a, a business visa, but my kids and wife still need to fly out and come back now to be able to apply a non-B visa, which means you're the wife of a guy that has a business over here. So they went to Kuala Lumpur with the form. Now what happened when they came back, they were stopped at the visa office. They didn't have an onward ticket. And we were entering Thailand again after leaving, like just a day before. So the customs officer said, okay guys, you don't have an onward ticket, you're not able to enter Thailand. Of course, I called the office and doing all my visa stuff and everything, but nobody could do anything. So I quickly went online, I booked a cheap onward ticket that took like 20 minutes for the confirmation. After 20 minutes, my, my wife told the customs, yes, but okay, we have an onward ticket, but it's a different date. And then the customs looked at her and she looked at the ticket. She just needed to fill the form with the onward ticket, sign it, and bam, two hours later waiting, she was out with the kids, of course. And that was like a very exciting moment, of course, for her, because like, oh shit, well now do I need to go back to Malaysia? Do I need, like these things happen during the travels. Even we, with a lot of experience, forgot that it is necessary to have these onward tickets. So yeah, it's always a solution. Go to cheaponwardticket.com. You book a ticket that you are leaving the country and that's all. If you want to do it in a very legal, cheap way, you can also book, uh, for example, minivan services or train tickets from Thailand to Cambodia, whatever. Then you also have a ticket that's taking you outside of Thailand. Guys. Many possibilities, but always make sure you have an onward ticket. Let's jump into the next part. For the next part, guys, working that way again, uh, the news for today, really cool news, is that the city of Lugano, which is a Swiss city, Switzerland, Schweiz, der Schweiz, Lugano aus der Schweiz, the city now announced that you can pay all the municipal taxes with Bitcoin and Tether. So from today, you will be able to pay your government taxes in Switzerland, in der Schweiz, with Bitcoin and Tether. More and more cities are doing this. I think Zug also already is doing that in Switzerland. I think Zurich also is doing that in Switzerland. So there's many cities now in Switzerland that allow their people to pay their taxes, to their municipal taxes, with Bitcoin and Tether. USDT, for the ones that don't know what Tether is. Like a feather, teeter. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce it. It doesn't matter. But you can pay now your taxes in Switzerland. And I believe there will be more and more and more countries that will start to adopt Bitcoin as a legal tender as a form of payment for the government taxes, for example. El Salvador is doing it. I think Brazil will start to do it. I think Argentina will start to do it. I think more and more European countries will start to allow their people to pay their taxes with Bitcoin, because that is also how they can track the wallets of those people that are paying their taxes with those Bitcoin or tethers. Very simple. They want to get an insight in who owns what, because then they can tax people. And if they are going to block those currencies that can be completely anonymous, they won't receive taxes anytime. So it's better for them to adapt to this new technology and to tell their people, ah, you can pay with taxes. Then they can see how these taxes were paid from a certain wallet and they can tie that wallet to the social profile of that person. So be aware, blockchain is the most beautiful technology there is. And yes, you can stay anonymous but it's also the most transparent technology there is. Which means, if something is in the blockchain, it will never go out and everyone everywhere in the world can see that transaction and can see that information. So if that blockchain wallet address is tied to you, they can find all the things that are related to you. Beautiful, transparent, it is decentralized, but that also makes it trackable. And that's why the blockchain will be used in the future for more and more of these services. And when the governments really start to understand that it's not like multi-level marketing or something illegal or a disruptive database, when they really will start to understand how the blockchain will help them as a government, then you need to be prepared for that situation as well. So my solution is always keep moving your tokens from certain wallet addresses to other wallet addresses, maybe sometimes even use a mixing service because these mixing services make sure that uh, your bitcoins kind of disappear from the radar and appear again in a new wallet address that is not yet tied to you. So that's a very simple solution. There's now two wallets that is helping you with this. The first wallet is Samurai Wallet. If you uh, use the Samurai Wallet, you have a mixing service. And the second uh, option is Sparrow Wallet also has a mixing service integrated. 
So look at those two wallets when it comes to Bitcoin uh, and you have a very simple solution in holding Bitcoin, but also like mixing your Bitcoins up a little bit. So you keep your privacy there. Beautiful two wallets to keep an eye on. That was the news for today. Let's quickly jump into the next part. So then we arrive at the question for today. The question for today was from a follower and the question was Didi, if you're using these uh, debit cards, for example, the Bybit debit card or the Crypto.com debit card or the TAP debit card, um, every time when you do a transaction, is that not exchanging Bitcoin to fiat? And is that then not a taxable event? In my heart's opinion, it is not a taxable event. Because what if you're spending fiat, like euros, in a grocery store? Is that a taxable event? Yes, of course, you pay tax on your groceries. Like, for example, in Thailand, it's 7%, or in Europe, it's like 21%. That, that's a tax that you pay. I also pay that when I pay with Bitcoin, of course, or with these debit cards. But is it a taxable event because you exchange Bitcoins um, to Euros or to Thai baht automatically on the back end? I don't believe it is a taxable event. What if you change Euros, physical Euros, notes of 50, at an exchange office to Thai baht and then use those Thai baht to pay in a grocery store? Is that a taxable event? Will they tax you as income? I don't think so. It all depends, of course, also on which countries that you live. For example, we are Portuguese residents, so uh, Bitcoin, if you hold Bitcoin, is like a 0% tax. And if you spend Bitcoin, I think it's also 0% tax. If you exchange Bitcoin into euros onto your Portuguese bank account, yes, then it might be taxed if you made profits. But it's a very gray area still. So it's not like completely clear all over the world. In the Netherlands, for example, you only pay capital tax. So it's like 1.3% of your capital value on the 1st of January of each year. So if your capital is growing, you pay a little bit more tax. If your capital is decreasing, you pay a little bit less tax. In Germany, if you hold Bitcoins longer than a year, you pay 0% tax. If you trade in Germany and you make trading profit, you pay tax. But spending Bitcoin using a Bybit debit card is not really trading, is it? I'm just using MasterCard or Visa card to pay for my groceries. And the store is receiving Thai baht or euros or US dollars, wherever I am. But I'm cons I don't consider that as a trade because I am not trading anything. I'm just spending my Bitcoins. But also a very good reason why spending Bitcoins peer-to-peer -peer should win territory now. Why adoption really should take place. Because then you would not be even needing these debit cards anymore. Then you would be spending Bitcoin peer-to-peer. Like the rent of our house, we pay directly in Bitcoin. Or, for example, the flights, we pay directly in Bitcoin. And then, of course, it's not a taxable event because if it is a legal tender, like the dollar or the euro, you don't pay tax on your euros that you spend. You pay tax on the euros that you earn or the dollars that you earn. And that's what they call income tax. But as long as you don't earn Bitcoins, why would they be able to tax me on my Bitcoins? My Bitcoins are my capital. It's capital gain. I'm not earning Bitcoins daily. I don't have a Bitcoin income, so why would they be able to tax my Bitcoins? I don't think that's like possible. For me, Bitcoin is money, peer-to-peer -peer cash, and at the same time, a store of value with all the capacities that gold has, but then 10 times better. So it's a gray area. It's very difficult to tell you what is true or what is not true, because not all the countries worldwide already agreed on some kind of rule. There is no rule yet. Everybody still sees it as money. Some countries see it as money. Some countries see it as a security. Some countries see it as something else, as a, just something fake, you know? So it's a very gray area, but I don't consider using Bitcoin as a payment as a taxable event. Aside of the tax that you always pay, and the tax is, of course, depending on your country. I think Portugal nowadays is 23%, Europe an average 21%. I think Thailand, most things are still 7% or something. So it's completely different for each person, each country. But I don't think that using a debit card makes a big difference. I do think using a debit card is a perfect solution for you to use your Bitcoins worldwide. If you want to have these debit cards, by the way, use the links down below. Bybit at the moment has the best debit card out there. Big waves, guys, you can hear the sound. Uh, Bybit has a really good one. I've been using Crypto.com for a very long time. Also using TAP at the moment. Even using Wirex again. My wife is using Wirex. So we have four debit cards, all testing them worldwide. 
all working perfectly. My personal choice would be Bybit at the moment because it automatically changes all the funds that you have in your funding account uh, into the currency that you need on your debit card, like Daibot for example. So you can appoint the currency that you want to have used first. You want to first use your USDT or your Bitcoins or your Ethereum. You can set those currencies automatically in Bybit. So I really like the Bybit card. Now, let's jump into the next part. The last part of the video, guys, is the inspirational part. And in this inspirational part, I'm going to talk to you about ideas. Bitcoin is an idea. And what does that mean? That means it can't disappear that easy. A man might die. Nations might rise or might fall. But ideas keep living on. Whatever happens to the world, whatever happens to your country, whatever happens to you, whatever happens to me, whatever happens today, ideas will keep living on. Bitcoin will keep living on. The search for freedom will always keep living on because people believe in the idea of freedom. And Bitcoin, guys, is freedom. And not only financial freedom. Bitcoin is also giving you, because it decentralizes the world, freedom of speech. Freedom in any kind of way. Bitcoin equals freedom. And it's so important that an idea can't be just deleted from the world. Bitcoin can't be deleted from the world. It's a decentralized technology that started with an idea and is now so decentralized that even if they would stop Bitcoin's blockchain, the idea of Bitcoin would keep living on. And probably an improved version in 20 or 30 years again would start to live. Because the concept, the idea of decentralized finance cannot be deleted. It can't be deleted. A man might die, nations might rise or fall, but an idea will always keep living on. That is one of the reasons why I believe Bitcoin so much. It's unstoppable. It's unconfiscatable. It works borderless. It is just a beautiful idea that they can't stop ever again. Because if they want to stop the technology, the idea behind the technology will live on and someone else will create an improved technology. A hard fork, a soft fork. It's very important that you start to understand that Bitcoin is an idea that can't be deleted anymore from this world. It's integrated already in the biggest financial industries worldwide. This is gonna take Bitcoin's price to new all-time highs we have never seen before, just because now the international institutional adoption is arriving as well. Those institutions finally started to understand the idea of Bitcoin, finally start to understand what blockchain is doing for the world and can be doing for the world in the future. And because they now start to understand, they start to integrate it into their financial system. Now we, you and me, need to be aware that we don't let them take over the Bitcoin blockchain or any of our blockchains. We should stay in control. And how do we stay in control? By holding or hodling Bitcoins. The more Bitcoins we own, the less Bitcoins will be in their pockets. And the less Bitcoins will be in their pockets, the less control they will have on Bitcoin. Because you need to understand, yes, Bitcoin is completely decentralized, but it also means that those centralized entities can try to buy as much as possible Bitcoins and by that again start to control that Bitcoin blockchain. You and me, need to fight against that. We need to keep that tool that is providing us and the next generations of freedom in any kind of way in our pocket. It needs to be ours. That's why now all the retail should be buying Bitcoin. They should already have been buying Bitcoin when I told them at 16, 17, 18, 19 and 20 K. But we can see in the charts that retail is not there yet. It's the whales that are pushing now this Bitcoin price. Why is retail not here yet? Probably because they are now poor as fuck, because the government and the central banks killed them because of inflation. So they killed their bank account because of inflation. So everybody has been spending all the money they have to survive and even created debts to survive. So there is no money left now to invest in Bitcoin. I understand that. But still, 
every month if you have a salary, 10 to 20% should go into Bitcoin. Then go a little bit less party, or a little bit less holidays, or a little bit less other luxury stuff that you really don't need at the moment. You can also do these things in a very cheap way. And then you just hold as much as possible Bitcoins all the way to the top in 2025 when you take your profits and when you can breathe again. And you then play that game again and again and again so that we stay in control. As long as you use their currency, euros and dollars, they will be in control. The moment you start to use our currency, Bitcoin, we will be in control. It's simple as that. That was everything for today, guys. I hope you really enjoyed today's video. If you did enjoy today's video, then please give the video a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, leave a comment. There is no booty at the end. Sorry, but there were some booties in the midst of the video this time. Uh, now, thank you for watching, and I wish you an amazing day. And see you tomorrow again on a beautiful Friday. Bam!